So chapter 10.1 is angles and their measure, and we're going to talk about uh, what angles are and the way that we measure them, and then we'll get into the units that we use. So we're going to start out with Cartesian coordinate axis. These are each copy of the real line, and because of that you have one real axis and another real axis. This could be written as r times r, and we'll usually just be lazy and call it r squared, or r2. So the way we measure angles, this is always x-axis, y-axis. We're going to measure from the x-axis and go counterclockwise. So if we have a relatively small angle, we're going to measure this rotation right there, and we're going to use the Greek letter theta most frequently. So this is the way we measure angles, and the sometimes you might need to use a word, some of the vocabulary, like initial side, the end is the terminal, side, I don't really want arrows on these because I, do, I really only want to be focused on where the uh, where this angle is. We know which way is a positive x-axis, we know which way is the positive y-axis. To the right is positive x, up is positive y. And as we rotate, this is a small angle, if we keep rotating counterclockwise we'll have an angle over here in uh, this quadrant, and if we keep going we'll have an angle down here and down here. So if we look at the way the angle would rotate through. It divides our uh, R2 space into quadrants. Obviously quadrant four. And if we use Roman numerals, which get really annoying uh, very quickly. IV, I think that's four. One, two, three, four. And of course, if you want to use three, four Arabic numerals, go for it. I will mostly use them. So those are quadrants, one, two, three, and four. And again, the reason it goes one, two, three, four, just think of the way counterclockwise rotates, and you'll see you go through quadrant one, then two, then three, then four. So that's why they're labeled like this. The most common units that we measure our angles in are degrees, so we'll talk about those first. So degrees are angle measurement units. So most common uh, number of degrees you've probably heard of is 360. So we'll start with that. Degrees, just like the temperature, is uh, denoted with a, it almost looks like an ex, uh, exponential, exponential notation to the zero power. Uh, but it is degrees and 360 degrees we know is one rotation. So in math is, we use the equal sign, so 360 degrees is one rotation. And we want to go one rotation in the standard uh, direction, which is counterclockwise. Now, that ends up being a lot to write, and you don't want to keep writing counterclockwise many times, so we're just going to use CCW. That'll mean counterclockwise. So what are other uh, numbers of degrees you've commonly seen? We have 180 degrees. Now, if we think about the equation we have written above, a lot of you probably already know 180 degrees in terms of rotations. But if you think of this 360, start with what you know. And I'm going to abbreviate all of that. Rotation counterclockwise. So rot CCW. 360 degrees is one rotation counterclockwise. So I'm going to just do a tiny bit of algebra and multiply by one half. Now, of course, we're doing algebra, so I'm multiplying both sides by one half. 
both the 360 and the 1 are mo both multiplied by a half. Uh, because we're doing algebra, you, this is not really an algebra class, I will definitely go over the steps I'm doing more carefully at the beginning, and then we'll skip more and more steps as we go forward. So I'm gonna multiply, and this is the way I'll denote multiplication. And you just know, of course, I'm multiplying both sides by a half. Uh, because otherwise, if I'm only multiplied one side by a half, I would not be doing algebra. I would be doing something different. So 360 degrees divided by two is 180 degrees. Now one times a half is just one half. So 180 degrees is a half of a rotation. And of course, counterclockwise. And the other common degrees, 90. And if I multiply by another half, I'll get down 180 times a half is 90, and a half times a half, one fourth rotation counterclockwise. So these are some common angles you've seen. Of course, 45 degrees uh, is another one, and we'll see a few other uh, small angles as well. So these are the common degrees that you're going to see. We are going to look at some other common degrees, but before we get into that, we're going to talk about uh, radians. So there is a minutes and seconds uh, in your textbook. We're going to skip that because those are not very common anymore. So what you find now when you need more accuracy than one degree, uh, they used to use uh, minutes and seconds, but obviously if you ever converted time, minutes and seconds to hours, etc., is a big pain, so they just use decimals now. So if it's a, uh, you want to be very accurate, and it's a very small amount, you might see in degrees something like 0 0.0032 degrees to talk about a very tiny angle. Uh, so we use decimals now instead of minutes and seconds. Okay, radians, so that we just finished degrees, radians are angle measurement units. So they're in some sense very similar to degrees, uh, but they they do angle uh, measure how much the angle has uh, rotated, but they do it in a different uh, unit. So the radian, we'll start with the definition of what a radian is. Uh, I actually did not define what a degree is. You could take this first equation to be a definition right here. That degrees are the thing such that 360 of them is one rotation. Uh, the other way, if you want to solve for one degree, if you want to do that, you would multiply both sides or divide both sides by 360. So this says one degree is one 360th rotation counterclockwise. Now, obviously, that's a tiny fraction, so the angle looks not even that big. Uh, if I drew the angle accurately, it would probably look more like that. So it's a very tiny angle. Okay, so radians, we're going to start with their definition. So we're going to take a circle with radius r. Here is our circle. We'll measure the radius. And of course you can measure any direction, we'll just measure it this way. And if you walk around the edge, you're gonna make a curved path. You're walking along the circumference. Uh, it's the whole entire circumference, uh, if you remember that. Two pi r. Uh, but that's not what we're after. Don't go around the full circumference, just so the circumference is the radius multiplied by this number two pi, which is a little bigger than six. So that's way bigger than I wanna go. Just go far enough, so that's not very good, so that the distance that you walked, and I'll 
draw that in blue, right there, that curved distance is the exact same amount as the radius. And of course we measured a second radius right there from the center back to the circle. So if you want to look a little more closely, So why in the world are we constructing this? Well, the rotation that was made right here, I'll label it as theta. So again, the three R's, those three R's are distances. Theta is a rotation, not a distance. All right, so how do we do this definition? How is theta related to these R's? We're going to define the angle theta is one radian. Uh, we know the circumference. So if I want to think about the circumference, how much further around the circle do I have to go? Uh, the answer to how much further around do I have to go is two pi, uh, two pi times further. So we have our arc length related to, well, Yeah. Mm. Ah, so what we're gonna do next is think about how I tried to draw this to scale. Uh, how much, how many of these thetas would it take to cover the entire circle? I'm going to cheat a little bit and no shapes. There we go. To shape, I'm gonna try to get the best circle I can. That's pretty good. All right, I'll turn that back off. So I'm going to do my best to measure that much around the edge. So I'm going to say it's about that far. You should be doing this. Um, maybe it's a little farther. All right, it's just an estimate though. So try to have those two radii measurements the same as the um, curve distance right there. And then I'm going to copy this as many times it takes to get around the entire circle. So I'm going to do my best to measure another one, two, three, four, five, Six, so it looks like it's pretty close to six. So it looks like six, uh, well, approximately six. Radians around the circle. All right, so this is an estimate. The actual number you already knew right up here with circumference. So circumference is one trip around the circle and uh, it is takes two pi times r. So one full lap around the circle um, takes two pi radians. And of course, we're going counterclockwise equals two pi. So now you should be asking, what in the world is two pi? Or really, what in the world is pi? If you know what pi was, two pi is twice that much. So pi is the number, basically, such that two pi is the number of radians it takes to get around the circle. This is an irrational number, so that's the best definition there is for it is the number of radians it takes to get around a circle. Uh, you can approach
approximate it, and you've seen pi approximated, so if we approximate pi, I do not have this memorized to very many digits. Uh, 3.14, those are the ones, hopefully you remember those. 159, there are digits that come after it. Just to warn you, you should not write dot, 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 because whenever you write three dots in math, that implies there's an obvious pattern, or somewhat obvious pattern. There is no pattern to these uh, digits, so it would be misleading to write dot, dot, dot. There is no pattern here. Uh, what I used here is an approximate equals. So it just uh, denotes you're approximating. You're not saying it equals. Uh, so what is one pi? Well, we're gonna come back to our uh, definition of pi right here. It looks like it wasn't really a definition, but how do we solve for pi? You're gonna multiply both sides by a half. And of course, we're gonna get lazy and write rads instead of radians. Ooh, I did not multiply that by a half. So one half rotation counterclockwise is equal to pi radians. So that is what one radian is, is one half rotation counterclockwise. And so that is radians right there. And of course I could multiply again by a half if I want to. Um, I have one fourth rotation counterclockwise equals pi times a half is pi over two radians. So that is analogous to what we did up in the degrees here, where we had 360 is one rotation, 180 is a half rotation, 90 is a fourth rotation, very similar, except here we're measuring in radians, radians, radians. So now what we're gonna do is connect radians to degrees. And the way we're gonna do it Right, radians and grades. Radians and degrees. We're going to start with what we know. The common uh, element to both of these was rotations counterclockwise. So we're going to start with one rotation equals one rotation. Not very controversial. And then on one side, we're going to do our 360. So up above, I wrote down one. And we, uh, said one rotation is equal to 360 degrees. Uh, right here on the screen, one rotation, counterclockwise, is equal to two pi radians. We're not going to be writing rads, rads, rads everywhere uh, because generally we're gonna be measuring in radians. Uh, so we're not gonna keep rewriting rads, rads, rads. So you're going to see this more commonly written down. When I use degrees, I will uh, use the degree symbol. So that is one good uh, equation to memorize. I recommend that uh, what I put in boxes you memorize. And so that's memorize that. Uh, this very useful as well. Most of you probably had this memorized before, so you probably don't need to spend any brain cells remembering that one. But definitely the one rotation is two pi rads, and two pi is 360 degrees. Now multiply these both by a half. You have pi is 180 degrees. This is also a good one to memorize. Um, it's up to you which one you want to memorize. So just, if you totally space out, just start right up here. One rotation is one rotation. And then one at a time. Now we're gonna do some example problems on conversions. And we'll go 
start with degrees into rads. Uh, the process is very similar going either way. Um, so if you can go one way, chances are you can probably come back the other way. So our first example, I write uh, EX underlined, and that means example. So our first example, convert 60 degrees to radians. So we're going to start with what we know. What we know, either of these two we've memorized. And this one will probably be easier to start with that second one. So I'm going to write down what I know. So this is going to be true, uh, assuming I memorized it correctly. And how do I turn 180 degrees, turning 180 into 60? Obviously, you need to divide by something. Uh, you could think subtracting, but let me show you why subtracting would not be the good move here. So if I use subtraction, if I subtracted 120 degrees on both sides, obviously, and 180, and that is 60 degrees, so I could say 60 degrees is pi minus 120 degrees, but that doesn't really convert the degrees directly into radians. So this is not really what we want to do. So we don't, we're not going to use subtraction. Uh, what we're going to do instead is use uh, multiplication or division. So if I divide by three or multiply by a third, that will uh, turn 180 divided by three is 60. And then pi times a third pi over three, uh, and if you want, of course, you can write the units we're using. So there is the number of radians uh, that is the same as 60 degrees. And we'll do uh, another example. And I will uh, generally put the answer, the final answer in a box as well. Uh, if it follows an example, it's not a it's something to memorize, it's the answer to the example. I mean, it doesn't hurt to, you definitely need to understand how to do the examples. I wouldn't say uh, necessarily memorize them though. So our next example, convert negative 120 degrees to rads. So I haven't talked about negatives yet. Um, you can answer this question without knowing uh, about negatives. So what we're going to start with is what we know. And I can either use 360 or 180. I have a choice. I don't want to use 180. I want to use 360 because uh, this is a third, basically a third of 360. So multiply both sides by a third. Oops. 360 divided by three is 120. Two pi over three. All right, that's not exactly what we want. What I really want is negative 120 degrees. So I could multiply by negative one. So negative two pi over three radians. So what in the world is negative due to uh, angle measures? Well, it's the same thing, uh, same difference between negative numbers and positive numbers. You're gonna do the opposite. So instead of going two pi over three in the positive direction, you go two pi over three in the opposite or the negative direction. So that angle is gonna be measured clockwise. So if you want this is really a clockwise uh, angle. And we'll talk about where um, exactly how far over 2 pi over 3 would be. Um, it would not be that far. 
well, the far, the far of them, negative pi over two, but fractions suck, uh, unless you use common denominators, and we'll deal with that when we really have to work with fractions. So what we're gonna do now is convert the other direction. So we want degrees of radians, we're gonna go rads to degrees. And our first example, we'll go pi over six rads to degrees. So before what we did, we wrote down what we knew. So if I solve this the way I did before, I know pi 180 degrees, and all we do multiply by one six and we'll have exactly pi over six radians, and I just have to divide 180 by six. Uh, there is an alternative way to do this, and this is the way that um, you do this in a science class. I'm gonna do this in a unit conversion method. So especially if you're going into one of the science classes, you might wanna do it this way. We're gonna Begin with what we know, onto the pi is 180 degrees. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by pi. Uh, so if I divide both sides by the number pi, pi over pi is one, and 180 degrees over pi is 180 degrees over pi. Uh, the other thing I could do is divide both sides by 180, Now I'm going to do algebra on the units, so this will look better if I write the word degrees and don't use this exponential notation. So what I'm gonna do is basically divide, no, this is not good. No, no, we'll be okay. So I'm gonna divide, uh, I wanna get radian out of here. So I divide both sides by a rad. And do something similar up here, Sol solving for one is what I'm doing. Divide both sides by a degree. There we go. So why are these useful? Well, what is the only number you're allowed to multiply by and not change uh, what you're multiplying? And the answer is the number one. So here's two different versions of one that we can use uh, to convert units. So we have pi over six rads. And I wanna convert two degrees. So what I'm gonna do is multiply by one. Seems kinda silly. except what version of one am I gonna use? It would be bad to use this version of one because I'd have rads times rads. So instead we're gonna use the other version of one. So radians cancels radians, pi cancels pi, and we have just degrees. And we have to take 180 divided by six, which is exactly what we'd be doing over here if we kept going right there. So it was 180 degrees over six. You could do division, but factor trees are more fun. Uh, let's factor a two and a 90. 
and a three and just something and a 30. So right here, if I stop right here, uh, this tells me 180 is two times three times 30 or six times 30. Six cancels six, so we get 30 degrees and we'll write it like that. You can do long division, knock yourself out. It's very reasonable. Um, it's a skill you're gonna need uh, when we get into uh, dividing. Oh no, that's pre-calculus one. So you won't really need long division in this class. Uh, you can get around most of those problems by using factor trees if you'd like to. Or I think reducing fractions is basically what this is. Um, but I like factor trees, so I use factor trees for reducing fractions. So that's a radius to degrees. I may have written down arc length, but I don't know that we did an example problem. Well, you can only really do arc length in radians anyways, so let's write down the arc length formula. So arc length of a circle. Ooh. There we go, of a circle. Now, you're not always going to go one radian. You could be whichever angle. We're just going to call it theta. So our arc length is the amount we're going to travel on the edge right here. I think we're zoomed out too far. So here's the arc length. We're going to use the letter S for that. And of course, radius, radius, and we got our theta right here. So arc length, S is the arc length, and S is R times theta, that's it. Nothing more to it. The only caveat, the only thing you have to worry about is theta has to be measured in radians. So how do we measure arc length? In uh, degrees? The answer is you don't. You convert to radians and then measure in radians. And this example is going to do just that. So we're going to use this s equals r theta on this example here. And let's see, find the length of the arc. circle with radius 120 degrees and well uh, angle 120 degrees wow and let's go 12. So we know, uh, the only problem is we need theta in radians. Good news is, I believe we did this problem or something just like it, 120, somewhere around here. We did this work, oh, this will work. Uh, we're gonna have double that, so if I, 120 degrees is 2 pi over 3. We wrote that somewhere around here, but this will work. Ah, there we go. It was with negatives. So positive 2 pi over 3 is what we want. So 120 degrees is 2 pi over 3 radians. And now we use this as our theta. We can substitute in our radius of 12 and our 2 
pi over 3. You don't need to write rads. I don't know why I keep writing it. Rads, you pretty much need to be in rads for almost everything you do in this class. So 12 over 3 is 4. Um, 4 times 2 pi over 1, which is 8 pi. Uh, I did not write down what units we measured the radius in. So if we're in feet, our units are feet. Now, what in the world is 8 pi feet? Well, again, if you want a, a it's an irrational number, so that you can't write out a decimal for it, but you can say it's approximately equal to, this is good enough for most purposes. If you had a calculator, you can multiply those two together and uh, get that approximate value. Uh, web work, I believe your accuracy has to be within 3% of the right answer, so there is some wiggle room on web work. Uh, 3.14 should work on almost every uh, problem you have to use theta. Um, if not, you can always use the 3.14159 that I wrote down above.